Alright guys, it's been uh, a long time since I made a video, but uh, that's because I've been working on a lot of projects. One of which is this store that I'm making. Um, it's a complete PayPal store, and I'm making it from scratch so I can learn everything about it. And that's where these three tips came from. These three tips almost have nothing to do with each other. They're just some really cool things, some annoying things that I found out while making this store. One thing. A lot of what I'm I'm using a ton of Ajax and jQuery to make this store, to make it pop. All right. So one thing with Ajax that's necessary is sometimes you need to let the user know that you're waiting for Ajax to finish. So when I'm working on a development server, which I have running on here, and you can watch my last, I don't know, 30 videos ago, um, I had to set up a development server. So when I'm running on a development server, running an Ajax call takes a split second. But once you pop it up online, an Ajax call may sit there and wait for a minute, depending on the user's internet connection and how much code you have running in the back. So it's really important when you're doing this for real to actually make indication of that something's going on. So there's two things that you can do for this. Um, one is is you can actually write out your Ajax call from scratch here. But m more importantly, um, this gives you more control writing Ajax like this. But let let's keep this simple here. Um, the normal way that that I do Ajax is with this uh, post right here. So you use Ajax, uh, the, their jQuery's money sign dot post, and you choose the file that you want to send to PHP, and in brackets you send the variables in colon form. Let me actually just go ahead and write a new one here, uh, because I have that one full. So we'll do dot post, right? Dot post, and then we'll send it to, uh, you know, PHP file dot PHP, whatever file you want, comma, and in brackets you'll put your variables. So you put, uh, you know, my var one colon hello, and then you could do comma my var two colon, and then you could actually have a JavaScript variable here. So you could have, um, you know, var two as the variable. You could set, uh, you know, var var two equals i, right? So that would be that, and then you you could close your braces there and then you have a callback function function right function and then the callback function so so after p so after ajax calls a php file right it can send information back to you which is the whole point so that comes back in a variable name it whatever you want i'm going to call it data right so then i could you know do do whatever with i'll put that in the comment do whatever with data as the variable right here okay and then you have to uh, close the uh, normal parenthesis. There's another parameter you could pass, which is comma quote JSON. Okay, if you wanted uh, the data to be a JSON object. And I went into this in the past. I'm not going to go into it again. I'm just saying for this purpose, here's an AJAX call. Okay, we're just going to get rid of this because it's not that. Now, how do you know when the AJAX is done? If you write out, if you've ever written AJAX from scratch, you realize that there's a way to do that. You have a, uh, you know, you actually test which state the AJAX is on. So, but using jQuery a, as a wrapper, there's no way to do that. Well, actually, there is if you look hard enough. It's using this dot uh, AJAX start method, and I, and I have it placed here. You place it on the variable or, or on the jQuery variable that's affected. Okay, let me explain. I have the submit action event applied. Okay, I have the submit event applied to a form. I'm going to use this dot ajax start. Okay, so when any type of ajax happens from this event, okay, do this first. Okay, now what this is going to do is this start function is going to let whatever I'm doing know that I'm about to use some Ajax. So in most cases you'll put up some sort of loading or sending screen. In this case I just change the value of a button to say sending. Okay? And then in your Ajax call, whichever Ajax call you're doing, as long as it's the same Ajax from jQuery, just have some sort of ending function that does the opposite of your start. Okay? So the key function to know here is the Ajax start function and apply it to the event that the same Ajax is on, okay? And let me just reiterate that one more time. Submit is the event that I'm attaching to the form. This is the Ajax call that happens on this event. So I'm also going to add this Ajax start event so that I can let the page know Ajax is starting, say, so I can tell it to say loading. 
and then when it's done in here in this function I've written somewhere else I'll let it know that it's finished okay that way you can tell when Ajax starts and when Ajax finishes okay the next thing is really 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 helpful okay so say for example um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and add say this button this plus button right here if I add an on click event to this button and send it this okay so say I add an on click event to that button let's actually go down uh, to that plus button on click equals add option is the function I'm using okay we're gonna go ahead and send it this so I'm sending it the JavaScript object that button nothing about jQuery here nothing at all okay now I could okay well let me let me back up I'm sending it the object so we'll go to add option right wherever that is I have that somewhere up here uh, add option here it is add option okay so I'll pass it this so let me actually just go ahead and write the function up here I'm wasting time all right so function add uh, I'm just doing this for purposes add option and I pass it the box basically okay now this box is not a Java is not a jQuery box but say I want to do something that only jQuery can do I mean of course you can do everything in JavaScript but if you're using jQuery sometimes it's just really easy so say I need to uh, add a click event to this box without I guess it's already a click event say I want to add a mouse over event okay to this box and I don't want to do all this IE does it click event default prevent the you know cross browser stuff that's what jQuery is good for so I want to bind it with jQuery so normally if you didn't know this trick what you have to do is find some sort of way to identify that box so you could say jQuery something like name equals and then give it a name you know box name and then that would select it if you gave it a name or you could select it by ID if you gave it an ID but I'm already sending it this which is a lot simpler than giving it an ID and trying to find it again so how can I turn this JavaScript object into a jQuery object? Very simple. Just wrap uh, jQuery around it. There. That's it. This is now a jQuery object. Okay? So I can do stuff like dot uh, hover, right? Dot hover function. That's probably written wrong because I don't remember how to use hover. But there you go. That's, at, that's all you have to do to create a jQuery object out of the box. Okay, the last thing I want to cover, um, I know I've been uh, completely not what I was trying to do with that. I'm probably going over time. But the last thing I wanted to show you was in MySQL. This has been a huge problem until I finally figure this out. There are keywords in MySQL that you can't use. Okay, so for example, this values table, I have a table called values. Stupid move. Don't do that. But I'm not changing it since I have already have structure built around it. So if you don't have these little nicks, these guys, if you don't have these, which is the uh, under the escape key on most keyboards, you know, this thing, if you don't have that here, MySQL will throw an error. It won't let you do it. If you leave it just like this, because values is a key, if you know, values is a key word that I had forgotten. So I'm ripping my hair out figuring it out, and I finally I realized when, I, when you actually run it in phpMyAdmin, phpMyAdmin always, always puts those little nicks in you know by default and I never knew why but now I know why because it prevents things from going wrong so in my sequel if you're having problems check to make sure your table name is not in a general list and I'm sure you can go to mysql.com and look it up but you know put nicks around it or ticks or whatever you call them just to be sure that that's not the problem because that was the problem for me and and finally I figured that out and, and now everything works great so so those are just three little quick tips jQuery Ajax and my sequel just gets you further down the road um, you know, there you go. So there will be more coming about this story later on.